six thirty or so, seven, almost seven maybe. Who knows? I don't know. I got up, uh, got up at five, and then, um, of course, you know, got ready, had coffee, I'm taking a right hand turn at Albuquerque, and uh, had coffee. You know, rustled around a little bit. I do all that in my tent, so it's nice to it's nice to have a little tent to to do that in. You're not in a shelter bothering people. You know, nobody wants to bother anybody else. Well, maybe somebody does. Uh, but I I uh, I made coffee, got ready, started hiking. It was dark, except that okay, it wasn't dark. The moon was a near full moon and it lit up the the landscape it was beautiful you could see the the silhouettes of the mountains in the distance you know it was just and then there was the twinkling of lights as little bitty houses were stashed here and there it was gorgeous it was almost a bob ross painting if it weren't for all the trees that were in front of the way in the way it would be a bob ross painting um but the trees are not bad to be in the way you know it's still uh, it's still well it's april april 2nd day after april fools i had a great joke played on me yesterday uh thank you so much it was hilarious oh man enough to make me sit down take my pack off brood about it for a quick hot second and then uh yeah and then ha 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 april fools yeah it was great Actually, it was a really good joke. I laughed and then bragged about it. So we just went out of all of these. I don't know what these are. Ash? Uh, I don't know. Kind of gray trees. And now I'm going into a, a pine forest. Yeah. Getting ready to cross over highway, I think. Maybe? Mm, I don't know. I'm trying to put in big miles today. Uh, it's going to be a phenomenal day. Uh, I'm headed toward Irwin, Tennessee. We're getting out. I think today will be the last day that I'm like stretching the line between Carolina and Tennessee. So uh, I've been one foot in Carolina, one foot in Tennessee for the longest time. And I think once I get to Irwin, um, it's straight Tennessee the whole time. So I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, check it out on the map. Uh, you know, you can always go to the website. There's a map down at the bottom that plots out exactly where I am on what day. Uh, thank you, Riley. You're awesome, of course. Uh, and just a quick shout out to everybody that's been helping me out, keeping my spirits up. You know, you're out here and you see little bitty things or little clips or pictures of something beautiful. And what you don't see is the three miles uphill staring at the ground constantly or the three miles downhill where your knees feel like they're just going to pop right out of your skin or the 10 miles in between x and y where it's just switchbacks going back and forth which is what i'm getting ready to do um yeah you're in nature and yes it's beautiful and yes it's well, semi-quiet because I'm getting ready to cross over a highway. Uh, I think, I don't know. I actually don't know where I'm going to cross. I know that there's a highway down there. Look, there it is. Bam, highway. Speeding vehicles of doom. You know, big, huge steel or aluminum or plastic hunks of burning metal flying down the road at ridiculous speeds that could kill me at any second. I know it's terrifying anyway so I'm gonna continue on the hike for the day I'm running low on battery um, when I get to Irwin I'm gonna go check the the big W they have one of those there uh, see what they can do for batteries uh, to give me a, a few extra days huh? I found that um, the 120 100 milliamp or millil uh, yeah, the 2100 one, uh, it's an anchor, uh, great job anchor, phenomenal battery, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is keep me alive for four days, um, and I say me, but it's just a phone, a little computer, anyway, more ramblings from the trail, 
as it comes on. Uh, I'm going to put a little effort into this little gray matter into this crossing of the road because uh, I don't want to die, you know, but I'm faced against odds that are just ludicrous at this point, you know. There they are. Oh, look, see? No, now you can't see it. I was going to say, check it out, look how steep all this stuff is, but you guys really can't tell how steep it is. All you can see is like flat land. Yeah, no, I'm walking up and down hills. That's all it is. You go down a hill, you got to go back up it. And then once you're up it, then you have the torture of going downhill. Because believe it or not, I thought I'd never say it. My knees are killing me on downhills. They're screaming. But that's all right. Look, there's a fence post. So apparently, uh, Sam's Gap was owned by a, a family in Atlanta, and they donated it all to the Appalachian Trail. I don't know how they did that. There's a foundation. I'll put a picture up after this, I think. I'll try to, if I remember. Um, really nice of that family. I mean, here they are, you know, preserving a little bit of wilderness that uh, would otherwise be eradicated by the onslaught of civilization as we move forward to uh, take over the planet slowly but surely anyway yeah there's my rant <laughs> all right hey happy day after easter and oh there it is no i'm poking out onto civilization bam look at that yeah that doesn't look scary in the least especially when you have a giant manhole cover that has some kind of well at least it's daylight so it's not even a manhole cover it's just a manhole who knows what lurks in here it could be a, a could be a it could be a gatorade bottle see what i mean bam right there okay guys talk to you later okay there's the sign i'm going in this dark bridge underneath it's uh, close to daylight, so I'm not too worried about the trolls. But if they're up there, hey trolls, please don't eat me. I don't want to get eaten today. Or whatever it is trolls do, what do they do? They, they take you captive and make you slaves or something? I have no idea what trolls do. Ah! Ooh, that was close. Here's a quick one. Check this out. So I just came out from underneath the Bridge of Doom. And look, man has come in and planted all of these bushes. And I bet these bushes are gorgeous when they're blooming. And I bet they're gorgeous when they're, well, you know, there's some kind of symmetry to it. Look, they're in nice little rows. Um, I bet they're really pretty. Look, there's some on the other side. But you would think that we would figure out, instead of putting mulch down, you would think that, oh, look, there's a little bird. It's a robin. You can see it. Oh, yeah, early bird gets a worm. Ooh, I hope that worm is sleeping in late. Hello, Robin. Oh, please don't hurt me. You're coming at me, man. I didn't do it. Whatever it was. Please don't eyeball me like that. You are doing some serious eyeballing. Woo. Oh, there you go. Okay. Woo. Oh, that was close. Anyway, it seems to me that we would figure out some way, instead of having mulch on the ground, to have some form of... Uh, Ooh, look, Tennessee welcomes you. It says so right there on this big old sign. Uh, seems that we would have some crazy idea of putting more grass down or more ground cover underneath these bushes. You know, that way uh, there's ground cover. Some kind of evergreen, maybe some little flowers, something that would make, uh, you know, be appealing to the eye and, and uh, it wouldn't have erosion like it's happening right there at the bottom of these plants. Here's a quick one. Check this out. So I just came out from underneath the Bridge of Doom. And look, man has come in and planted all of these bushes. And I bet these bushes are gorgeous when they're blooming. And I bet they're gorgeous when they're, well, you know, there's some kind of symmetry to it. Look, they're in nice little rows. Um, I bet they're really pretty. Look, there's some on the other side. But you would think that we would figure out, instead of putting mulch down, you would think that, oh, look, there's a little bird. It's a robin. You can see it. Oh, yeah, early bird gets a worm. Ooh, I hope that worm is sleeping in late. Hello, robin. Oh, please don't hurt me. You're coming at me, man. I didn't do it. Whatever it was. 
Please don't eyeball me like that. You are doing some serious eyeballing. Whew. Oh, there you go. Okay. Whew. Oh, that was close. Anyway, it seems to me that we would figure out some way, instead of having mulch on the ground, to have some form of, uh, look, Tennessee welcomes you. It says so right there on this big old sign. Uh, seems that we would have some crazy idea of putting more grass down or more ground cover underneath these bushes. You know, that way uh, there's ground cover. Some kind of evergreen, maybe some little flowers. Something that would make, uh, you know, be appealing to the eye and, and uh, it wouldn't have erosion like it's happening right there at the bottom of these plants. You know? What do I know? I'm a smart man. I'm just here hiking a trail. Heck, I can barely follow this nice straw path. Somebody put down straw for us. Make it nice and soft on the feet. Yeah, it's really nice. I know you can't see it right now, but there's a deer on this ridge. Oh, it's a big old buck. No, 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 little dog. Okay, oh, there it goes. Fleeing. White tail up. Yep. I have now seen a deer. So, as far as anyone is concerned, I could be in San Antonio and have seen more wildlife than I have on this trail. That's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I gotta get a picture of this thing if I can. Okay, so I crossed this road up at the top of the hill, and this is telling me to turn left. That's oh, a fairly steep little road going up there. And then uh, come down here, cross the road, and uh, yeah, looking both ways because, you know, don't want to end up like a roadkill. And then bada boom, bada bing, here we go, big metal railings. You are not going through that if you're in a car. Okay, I'm not going to talk long because you don't have to. Here we go. This is Big Bald Mountain and there's the marker.
All right, you're not going to believe this. I can hear birds chirping. We're just on the other side of the mountain where I had been pummeled with wind, just like hammered all the way climbing up that mountain. And now the wind is hardly blowing at all. Well, okay, now it's picking up. Of course, it's going to prove me wrong. Thank you, wind. Actually, it's really, really still compared to what it was all the way coming up. And I was way down there. And now the truck goes way up onto that other bolt, which is totally cool. But I got a feeling as soon as I get around to where I can start climbing down this thing, pick up, the wind's going to pick up and switch. Very much like uh, a buddy of mine, Y2K, said when he was living in Korea, he said, the wind in the wintertime, you're walking down the street and you think, oh yeah, all I got to do is turn the corner and the wind won't be blowing in my face. And then you turn the corner and the wind changes direction, blows in your face. It's a constant. Yeah. I'll never forget that because, well, in winter in Korea, that's true. Well, at least I know I'm on the right path. Look at that. Another white blaze. Somebody was kind enough to put that there. Oh, yeah. And you see that white stuff right there? Yeah, that's called snow. Remember that stuff? Yeah, it's still here. Thank you very much. I'm in my uh, uh, flannel shirt. It's, uh, it's actually not too cold right now. Uh, my nose is running. There's snow up there, too. Um, my nose is running, but you know, it's a little chilly. I'd say it's about 40 degrees. It got really cold. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. I was thinking about switching to a t-shirt, and I saw those clouds roll in. The next thing I know, it's been dropping left and right. I don't know what that means, left and right dropping. I think it's just, a, you know, the phrase, it's been dropping left and right. But the temperature has been getting extremely cold. So, hopefully, with any luck, we'll have some flurries. No, that didn't happen. And this is what the trail has to offer. Yep. So, all right, back to it before I fall to my doom. We just climbed up this disastrous hill. It's me, Professor. Damn fog over here. No. Stretch. And then we come upon the top of this hill, which was, thank God, ended right there. And then we overlook this precipice of death. I'm gonna lean on this dead tree to look over. Yeah, see? Yeah, that's no bueno. But isn't that, that's just a thing of beauty right there. Makes you wanna, makes you wanna drink water and eat and go take a nap. Well, okay, at least me. Okay, it's the end of the night uh, of hike 13, 16, 17 miles today, maybe? I don't know, 13 miles left to go into Irwin. And uh, uphills, couple uphills, a lot of downhills. Had a pretty cool time. There was, uh, we stopped short of shelter. We, uh, I was hiking with... Uh, a dude named Stretch and AM Fog and we were hiking along and two other hikers uh, Not Dead and Mama Kitch had, were sitting around a campfire really nice campsite said hey why don't you just stay here and we packed it in for the day so sat around the campfire told jokes ate like a king if nor pesticides are eating like a king with spam. Uh, by the way, the spam was really good in that pasta side. This is the fettuccine. And, uh, and now it's, it's, it's time to go to bed and wake up and go hike some more tomorrow. Yeah. Anyway, 
catch you out there.